Welcome back. And I got to say, thank you so much for all of the subscribers that have left those really nice comments. I really appreciate it. It makes totally this entire thing totally worth it. So today we're going to do something a little different. I'm not on the adventure bike and I'm not camping, uh, but that's only because I was going to do it last weekend and the weather got to where I couldn't do it. So this weekend uh, we took everything that we packed for and we just set it aside for a week and took it on the road. But this time I brought a Ural. So it's a sidecar, Russian made Ural sidecar. Uh, and my lovely wife, Michelle, came out with me. So she's here. And uh, we are going to have something really special for you guys today. And it's going to be a very, very romantic a pizza. So stay tuned. Where are you gonna make pizza? Now, like I said, I had put this stuff together for last week to make, but like everything we do, uh, we try to make recipes that will, we modify recipes so they'll last uh, a week or so on the motorcycle, so they don't need refrigeration. You can pack them, for example. So when we couldn't go at the last minute on our trip last weekend, um, it was okay. We just took the what we prepared, stuck it away, and broke it out this weekend. All right, here we go. We got uh, olive oil, gotta have olive oil, right? And we have a little bit of, this is Asiago cheese wrapped up in cheesecloth. We'll put that on top. I love Asiago cheese, it's so good. And Baby Bell mozzarella. And I'm gonna show you a little trick with this later on. So we have Baby Bell mozzarella cheese right here. And let's see, oh, pine nuts. We got a cup, some of these pine nuts and these are, uh, need to be toasted. So we're gonna have to do that first. Some pesto, get some pesto in there. Fleischmann's Rapid Rise. Now this is important because it, you don't need to add it to water really to proof it. So this helps with not waiting around, waiting for the dough to rise. And of course, uh, you gotta have the red flakes or the chili pepper flakes and some cornmeal. Okay, this is the dough. And like always, I, I'll put the recipe in the link or in the uh, notes below. Uh, with all the different things in here. And I, and I did a little thing, a couple things different. I put a little bit of seasoning in here, which you don't normally do, but I like it. So I'll, I'll put the directions down there. And this is what we made last week. This is kind of neat. So we've got um, artichokes. These are grilled artichokes. We have uh, sun-dried tomatoes and these fancy olives. Michelle, do you remember the name of these olives? Remember what those are called? Kalamata. Kalam fancy olives. Anyway, I sliced them up and I stuck them in the vacuum sealer and I just fold it up like that. And that lasts for quite a while. I mean, it's been a week over a week and we're gonna use it today. Okay, so I'm gonna bring about three quarters of a cup of water. I'm just gonna get it warm. Doesn't You don't want it hot because you don't wanna kill the yeast. You just want it warm. You gotta be careful when you make this because you add the water um, as you go because you, if you put too much water in, you need to add more flour, which you probably don't have because you probably dumped the whole bag in there. That's not now this is the... Uh, the Fleischmann's instant yeast, and this is some very specific measuring I'm gonna do right now. So I'm just gonna divide it up here, about what I think half is, and cut this right down the center. Okay, we got our dough dry ingredients in here. Let's just put in, I'm gonna put most of it in, not quite all of it. Stir the, oh, and I need some olive oil too. I guess about a tablespoon of olive oil. Yeah, that's good. Tablespoon of olive oil. All right. And this turns into, I know it seems kind of weird, but it looks like a mess, but very quickly, it's gonna turn into a, a very nice dough that we're gonna be able to roll out flat on our uh, cutting board. So let me get this mixed in here and I'll be right back. So um, on the way up here, we stopped at one of our favorite wineries, uh, a winery called Retzloff. Um, we are lucky enough to have about 50 wineries here in Livermore uh, within spitting distance of our house pretty much and um, we just happened to stop at Retzloff. Um, cute little winery, they make great wines, um, family friendly, uh, beautiful little grass area, um, they have a little uh, band 
stand thing and they have music on the weekends and um, and it's just uh, all around neat little place. And uh, fun fact, um, Retzloff is the only certified organic winery in Livermore. So um, we decided to stop and pick up a bottle of their Merlot. Um, I really like their Merlot uh, when it's kind of warm out. Um, it's not super heavy wine, um, uh, but it's still uh, nice bodied and um, you don't have to have it cold, which is why we chose a red wine since we're on the, on the bike and um, don't have any real way to keep something icy cold. Yeah, I like using cornmeal because it gives it that sort of pizza, more pizza-y flavor or, or texture to it. And it doesn't dry out the, the, um, the dough, like flour would get, would get absorbed back in and, and dry out the dough. And this doesn't do it quite that much. Try to get a little bit of an edge around it, and that'll keep the ingredients from spreading out of the pan when you're cooking it. But it should look roughly well, about like that. All right, we gotta to toast these uh, these pine nuts up. And remember, you just take, like I always say, you always just take just what you need. And I just needed a few here to toast, toast up. Now when you do this, you gotta make sure you don't get it too hot, but you need it hot enough. I know, that sounds weird. You'll know what it needs to be. But the oil and the nuts, you don't need to add any oil in here because the oil and nuts are pretty oily, are gonna, are gonna leak out uh, and I'll help you toast these just a little bit. Okay, here comes the tricky part. We got to put, remember this is going to be the uh, top side down and that's the part we're going to toast up first. So let's see if I can get this to, oh, I almost lost it. Okay. <laughs> I would have eaten it anyway. We've seen this, we've seen this before, the two second rule. I'm pretty sure I can get that dough off the table and back in the pan in two seconds. Pretty sure. <laughs> I cut myself, you burned yourself. What else can we do? That's good wine. I like it. All right, well, it's been a few minutes, so let's see how this is looking underneath. Oh, that's perfect, that is perfect. So I'm gonna carefully take this out and uh, flip it over and turn the heat off. It's really important you don't try making the pizza on the fire because it'll cook too much. So I'm gonna turn the heat off while we prep the, uh, the ingredients here. So let's do that. Let's try not to burn myself again. Ow. Okay. Now we'll just put it here, flip it over here. There we go. That looks pretty good. This pizza I chose to do is pesto. Now you could use pizza sauce and do the same thing, uh, but we're gonna use pes pesto on this one. And I think I have about two ounces of pesto in here. Looks about right, maybe a little more. I'm just gonna spoon that on. You know, Michelle, I think this pizza crust came out a little thicker than the ones we've been making in the past. I think it's because of the um, we let it sit a little longer while we were um, with the, the, the active yeast. I'm not really a cook, so I don't really know how those things work. Next, we're going to put these baby bells on. Now, I hope you can see this down here, right here. But what I'm going to do is cut these baby bells up. These are those little tiny cheeses that have the uh, that are, have the wax on them. Now you want to open these carefully and save save the bits because we're going to use these later. Like I'm going to use this uh, wrapper and we're going to use the wax piece. So be careful with these when you take out. Don't don't mangle them. There's a little thing here. We can pull that off and you'll get this little wax piece here. Just set that aside. I'll tell you why later. All right, let's cut these up a little bit. We're gonna cut these in half widthwise and put the mozzarella on here. Look at that. This is already looking kind of fancy. Oh. All right, what else do we need to put on here? Let's put, I think next we're gonna put, now you see what I've got here? This is, again, I've just taken the ingredients that I needed and put them in here with the artichokes, the tomatoes, and the uh, fancy olives, and vacuum sealed it. So uh, then all you really need to do is, is cut them open and put that part on there. Just move these 
around. And these artichokes, uh, you can get them in the store. They're they're already grilled, which is kind of nice. And I like the grilled ones because, it, well, it gives it that more pizza, grilled pizza kind of flavor and texture and, and taste, since we don't have a real oven, uh, pizza oven to put this in. All right, let's put the sun-dried tomatoes next. All right, tomatoes. And we'll just move that around. Oh, it's already looking so good. I'm hungry. And let's see. And lastly, oh, no, not last, but we got to put these fancy olives on here. They're the expensive olives. Get the expensive olives. They're better. I think we need our pine nuts now. And, oh, almost forgot. We got to put some of that Asiago cheese on there. Oh, look at that. There we go. That looks beautiful. Now, this company called Firebox makes this uh, pan, and it goes with their other cooking system. But I really like it because it's, it's got a nonstick surface. It's exactly the right size, and I can use it for a lot of things. In this case, what I'm going to do is we're going to use this for a lid to sort of get some more heat back down um, on top of the pizza. So we're going to let this cook for a few minutes. Oh, you know what I forgot, Michelle? I forgot chili peppers. Oh, I'm going to put some on right now. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, it looks so good. All right. Oh, that looks like it's just about done. Let's get this on here. Let this cool down. Oh, yeah. It's hot. Get it on the plate here just so it cools down. That looks so good. I can't believe we made that out here. All right. We're going to let that cool down for a little bit. And then I'm going to show you what you can do with the wax from the, uh, the mozzarella cheese. Okay, here are the wax pieces from the Baby Bell cheeses. So all you need to do is grab a piece of tissue. It could be a Kleenex, just about anything. And you just take a piece off and roll it up like this. And what you're going to do is make a wick out of it. So this is just twisting it together. Then you take the two halves, nestle them inside each other like that and then put the wick right here. And I think, you know, this is what's needed when you're having a romantic pizza dinner with your wife. You have to have some candles. So we are making some candles. And these are the plastic wrappers from, from there. And I'm gonna use that as a base so we don't get any wax on this table. And you just mold it into a little candle like that. This is almost like that scene from, what was that Disney movie? Lady and the Tramp. Lady and the Tramp. We should have made <laughs> pasta and we could have eaten the pasta like, you know, like didn't they slurp the pasta together? Spaghetti moment. The spaghetti moment. Maybe we'll do that one of these times. We'll make like an Italian like pasta dish and have candles and Lambrusco. Chianti. Oh, Chianti? Okay. I thought it was Lambrusco. <laughs> All right. Let's see how our candles work. Look at that. What time is it? It's about like six o'clock or so already. So sun should be going down in a little bit. Anyway, that's how you make the candles, just like that. I guess we're gonna cut down this side, cut them into fourths. Oh, I can't wait to get into this. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Looks delicious. All right, sweetie, cheers. Cheers, I love you. I love you too. They were really good. Oh, really, really good. I'm not kidding. This is good. Really, really good. Not bad for just in a backpack, huh? Yeah. You know, we love motorcycles, camping, and cooking. And if you do too, could you please consider subscribing and hitting the bell? It would really mean a lot to us. And we look forward to seeing more of those great comments. So, see you soon.